Have you ever wondered why scientists have such a hard time battling viruses? Well, it turns out that viruses have very strong, simple shells called capsids that they use to store all of their information in. In this experiment called viral packaging, we're going to try and make some capsids of our own. For this project, you will need some sturdy cardstock or other heavy paper for printing the provided triangle template onto. You can find the template at howtosmile.org and each sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch paper will give you two templates to use. In addition, you will need around three feet of yarn and about a half dozen cotton balls and some tape for each of your experimenters. You'll want to have a pair of scissors handy so that you can cut out your templates and optionally you might want to have some crayons or markers for coloring your capsid proteins. Once you have all of your materials gathered up, we can try to solve the problem that took the microscopic virus millions of years to develop. A virus protects its information with strong armor made from tiny pieces of protein. First, grab your crayons or markers and begin to color your triangle template. Viruses try to make each piece of their armor identical. It's much easier to repeat a pattern than it is to come up with new ideas each time. Once your template is finished, cut out each of your triangles and begin taping them together. Remember that we're working with scissors, so you want to make sure to be very careful. Once you've cut out all of your triangle pieces, we're going to begin taping them together. We're trying to make the strongest capsid that we can to hold the most information possible. Now just before you finish taping your virus closed, go ahead and leave an opening, which we'll call a lid, and we can insert some cotton balls in, as well as the yarn from earlier. Scientists sometimes call the capsid an envelope, and inside it, they find DNA, represented by the yarn, and protein information, represented by the cotton ball. When your model is complete, you can tape it closed, or leave it open so you can easily see how much information you were able to fit inside. With each of your models, take a look at their shapes. See if you can identify symmetry. For instance, with this shape, we have an icosahedron, or a 20-sided shape with triangles. In this shape, there are actually three axes of rotational symmetry. For instance, when you look at it this way, and then flip it 180 degrees, it looks like the exact same shape. Can you find any other axes of symmetry in this shape? How many axes of symmetry are in the capsid that you made? Scientists today use these processes of the axis of symmetry as well as opening the capsid shell in a process called gene therapy, which they crack the different armors of the virus open so that they can insert information and make the viruses easier to fight. This is a very large area of research now and it's very important. Now that you've solved the problem that viruses had to solve in protecting and replicating their information, maybe you might try doing this experiment again using different shapes. For instance, you might try mixing squares and triangles. Is this more difficult to produce? Try to make shapes that hold the largest volume of data possible.